Before we start our service today, I want to take a few moments to address what's going on in our country today. Uh, as everyone knows, this past week, the landmark decision in the Supreme Court, Roe versus Wade, was overturned. The religious right, you know, uh, the Church of Hypocrites, the uh, Babylonian Empire reinvented and revived is rejoicing today because they were able to cause something to come about and that makes them feel powerful. That makes them feel like they have power. And after all, that is what they desire and that's what they seek, to have power and influence in the world. Um, the true church of Jesus Christ is not interested in such things. I want to apologize to the women of America in the name of Christianity. I want you to understand today that what happened this week was not the byproduct of the conduct or the actions of Christians. Uh, it was neither the conduct of Christians nor the conduct of Americans that caused this to happen. The people that have been fighting for this for decades now are neither Christian nor are they American. And you say, well, what do you mean when you say that? I say that because a true American understands that liberty must be extended uh, across the board. There cannot be uh, exceptions to the rule because when you start creating exceptions, you begin to go down a very dark path. And as you begin to uh, outline exceptions to freedoms and exceptions to liberties, uh, before too long, depending on the whim of those in power, uh, they're going to start coming after you. And the thing that really drives me insane when it comes to the short-sightedness and frankly the stupidity of evangelical America. Notice I didn't say evangelical Christian America. They're, they're, again, they're not really Christian because the Bible tells us what a Christian looks like and they don't look like Christians and if you don't look like a Christian you're not a Christian mm -hmm. I don't care if you claim it till the cows come home I don't care if you profess it all day and all night if you don't look like a Christian and behave like a Christian according to the word of God you are not a Christian because a believer, a child of God, according to the Word of God, is known by their fruits. If the fruits are not present, then that tree is not good. That is what the Word of God teaches us. So these people are neither Christian nor American. They don't understand that liberties cannot be limited. I don't care how much it personally offends you. I don't care how much your religious convictions are uh, offended by certain liberties. Uh, that is pro that's part of the price we pay to live in a free society. And I've said it on Facebook, I've said it on Twitter. Uh, we cannot be free as Americans to worship God and to pray and uh, to follow after our convictions and our beliefs and to hold whatever religious beliefs we um, embrace, we cannot be free to do that while at the same time limiting someone else's liberty to do something that we may even view as sinful or wrong. No, it, it, you have to allow for both or else you're in danger of losing both. People don't understand. Adolf Hitler did not rush into power on the strength of demonizing Jews. That was only a small part of his platform. 
Adolf Hitler's platform was that he was going to literally, folks, word for word, he was going to make Germany great again. That was his platform. And he claimed moral authority. He claimed he was going to reestablish the morality of the nation. And you see what followed. Millions and millions of people being killed. And if you think, stupidly, if you think the only people who were killed were Jews, uh, then you don't know your history very well. There were members of certain religious sects who were also put in concentration camps. There were people who dissented with Adolf Hitler who were also put in concentration camps. Uh, the homosexual community was also put in concentration camps. Now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, uh, I'm going to tell you a little secret. that This is one of the worst things that could ever happen to the Republicans and I'm going to tell you a little secret. The Republican leadership knows it. They never wanted this issue settled. No, 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 no. They always wanted that issue hanging out there. Because as long as the issue was hanging out there, they've been able to use that to raise billions of dollars, campaign after campaign after campaign. The son of a famous evangelical Christian leader, uh, Francis Schaeffer, his son, has come out and he has expressed his sorrow for being part of uh, the anti-abortion movement and what have you over the years, the anti-gay movement, so on and so forth. And uh, he's repented of that because he realized, he came to realize, my God, we are not acting as Christians ought to act. We're not behaving as Christians ought to behave. And uh, he's got a video on YouTube. You can look at it. The son of evangelical leader Francis Schaefer. I forget his name. I think it's Frank Schaefer, but I'm not sure. Um, you can look at his video. And it's wonderful. You'll enjoy it and you'll appreciate it. Uh, but Christians do not from a biblical perspective, do not believe in forced conversion, nor do we believe in forced compliance when it comes to any form of morality, uh, any form of moral law. We don't believe that these things can be forced. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God Almighty, manifest in human form, never one time taught that His people were somehow to go into the world and influence the world so as to force compliance with certain moral issues. But Jesus Christ never one time engaged in any kind of uh, culture war either. You never saw the Lord engaged in any form of culture war. Now that Roe v. Wade has been effectively overturned, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to warn you, LGBT people are in huge peril. Huge peril. Because according to Francis Schaeffer's son, the two issues that the religious right and the political right have been able to use now for decades as enormous mon money raisers, fundraisers, well, one of those issues now is taken off the table. They can't use that to raise money anymore. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to go even harder and heavier on the gay, lesbian population, transgendered issues, uh, so on and so forth. So LGBT people right now have a target on their backs. And that'll be the next target that uh, the right is going to go after. And it's mainly because it gives them the opportunity to raise all kinds of money. Folks, let me tell you in plain English. I've been, I've been prophesying this for decades. But let me tell you in plain English what's going on. 
And I'm, I'm going to name it just as plain as I can name it because I don't have time to sit here and gargle and gurgle over stuff. The Republican Party has every intention of gaining permanent power in America by any means necessary. They don't care if it's honest or dishonest. They're not trying to win elections, folks. Right now, they're trying and they've been trying for decades to manipulate the population enough so that they could be elected into power and once in power, they had every intention of doing those things which are necessary to keep them in power permanently. In other words, to discard the Constitution, to throw it away. They have no use for the Constitution. The Constitution does not fit in with Republican plans. They have no interest in the Constitution whatsoever. They want to discard it, literally, they want to throw it away. They want to establish oligarchy in this country. Oligarchy meaning that the masses are ruled by a certain class or a certain group of people. Well, who do you think the certain group of people are going to be? It's going to be all the big bucks folks, all the folks that have lots and lots of money. That's who they want to run this country. And effectively, those people have been running it for decades because the way our election laws are set up and our uh, election uh, donation laws are set up, uh, they've been able to give, you know, ridiculous amounts of money in order to get their agenda done for decades. So, you know, our system is just a mess. And they're trying desperately. They thought in Donald Trump they were going to be able to hold the White House. A lot of people want to believe that January 6th, uh, 2021. Well, oh, that was Donald Trump. No, it wasn't. That was the Republican Party. You say, no, it wasn't, Pastor. Why, Trump was responsible for that. No, 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 no. Trump was at the head of it. The Republican Party was behind it. Because you'll notice the Republican Party has been doing everything in its power to sweep the whole thing under the rug and act like it never happened. Well, of course they want that. Because if they can do that, then they can make another attempt again. They can try it again. They don't want people who are involved. They don't want investigation because the more investigation, the more it's going to be discovered that people in Republican leadership were involved in the whole process. They don't want that. So they're desperately trying to sweep it under the rug. They're doing everything in their power to delegitimize the January 6th committee and their findings. They're still covering for Donald Trump. Folks, this is absurd. The man's out of office. They should be able to discard him like yesterday's trash if they wanted to, but they don't want to. And they say, oh, well, he still has too much influence in the party. You know what, honey? If they discarded the guy and threw him away and they took on Mr. DeSantis or someone else, Believe me, the same nuts who worship Donald Trump are just as happy to fall in behind somebody new. And the Republican Party knows it. So they're, they're using that. This is a distraction. This is a guise. This is what's referred to as a red herring. You know, to get you chasing after something in one direction so they can come at you from another direction. Ultimately, they want to establish permanent power. They want to establish an oligarchy. Right now, for the last many decades, they're doing exactly what Adolf Hitler did, and they are manipulating uh, religious people. Adolf Hitler said that it is far easier to come against, uh, uh, it's far easier to come against fact than it is religion. He said, Religion, you come against religion, boy, and people are going to give you a hard time. So therefore, he manipulated in his country, Adolf Hitler had the full support of the evangelical Christian movement, 
Read your history books, folks. Go online. Look it up. This is all stuff you can look up. He had the full support of the evangelical church in Germany. He used, quote-unquote, morality and moral issues as, you know, his big uh, selling point. But here's what happens when you go with authoritarianism and you fall into that trap. Once an authoritarian is put in place, because in the case of Trump, that's what they were trying to do. It wasn't a matter of him trying to take the position. No, the Republican Party was trying to establish him and put him in place because that was their that was the avenue whereby they'd be able to throw away the Constitution, you know, and set up what they want to set up. And who in the world is better to head up an oligarchy than a guy whose only love in the world is money? Now, who's better than that? Well, I want to tell you today, what happens with oligarchy is, is this or excuse me, authoritarianism is, as soon as an authoritarian gets into power and that power has been established as permanent and he doesn't need the voters anymore, your issues don't mean a hill of beans to him. He could care less about abortion. He could care less about gun control, uh, about uh, the right to bear arms. He could care less about the right to free speech. We already saw Trump doing all this. You know, he hated the right to free speech. He hated the right to assemble and to protest. He hated so many of the rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution and tried to demonize these things. He hated the press. Once an authoritarian gets put into power, all those things are gone. Free speech is gone. Freedom of religion will be gone. You think, oh, he's a religious man. Uh-uh. No. He's a man who knows how to manipulate idiot religious people. That's what he is. And as soon as he gets into power, he will turn on the very people who elevated him and put him up into power. He will turn on them like a snake because all of the freedoms and all of the liberties that you enjoy are things he could care less about. If they don't serve him and his purposes, then honey, they're gone in a minute. And it makes me laugh how people in this country think that the Republicans, you know, oh, they're Second Amendment people, glory to God. They believe in the Second Amendment. They believe in the people's right to bear arms. Sure they do. Sure they do. Right now, that's another issue they're able to use to raise all kinds of money and to get all kinds of support. But you know what? If you think for one minute once an authoritarian is established, that they're not going to come for your guns, you're out of your stinking mind. And people say, oh, how are they going to do that? Um, I've bought guns. I've got a license to carry. Every gun I bought, I had to go through a background check. Every background check I went through, had to tell them what kind of gun I was buying. Am I telling the truth? Had to tell them what caliber, had to tell them what kind of gun it was. If you think those records aren't being kept somewhere so that they can easily know exactly where to go to collect the guns when the time comes, you're a brainless moron. So yeah, they don't have a problem with Screaming and hollering today. Oh, the people have a right to bear arms. The people have a right to bear arms. Because, honey, when they want to come after those guns, they're going to come after them. And if they got to shoot you dead to get them, they'll shoot you dead to get them. Because yeah, at that point, they're not going to care. There's not going to be the federal protections of the Constitution. 
So I say to you today, for those who are celebrating this Roe v. Wade overturned decision, I'm sorrowful because I see it today as yet another step in the wrong direction for America. Whether I agree with it or disagree with it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anyone's opinion is on the subject. There is no more personal a decision that a human being can make than what they do with their own body. As long as women are biologically the bearer of children, as long as women are the ones who are able to become pregnant and to carry a child, they have every right in the universe to decide whether or not they want to carry that child to term. Period. End of the story. It is their decision. I, there is not a law in the land that is moral or that is just that is in keeping with the principles of a free America. There is no way in the universe that you can justify mandating that a woman has to carry a child. That's insane. That is insane. What are they going to mandate next? That cancer victims have to live with that cancer? And they can't, you know, they can't approach this type of treatment or they can't approach that type of treatment. You can't tell people what to do with their own body. That, that is the apex of absurdity when it comes to uh, coming against personal liberties. And according to our Constitution, every human being has a right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness and I've got news for you you cannot tell a woman how to live you cannot tell her what she must do if it is going to interfere with her liberties and you cannot tell her what to do if it's going to interfere with her pursuit of happiness am I telling the truth all right that's all I want to say on this subject because honestly I'm